YouTube. In this video, I want to show you how you can decrypt your web pages that are HTTPS encrypted in Wireshark. Now, let's examine, first of all, the problem. And a lot of people are curious about this. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start up Wireshark. And as soon as I've got that going here, I'm going to start capturing, I'm in my default profile, I'm going to start capturing on my Ethernet interface, which is the one that's connected to the network. So I'm just going to start capturing. There we go. Let me just resize this a little bit. All right, so we're just capturing packets. The next thing I'm going to do is I've opened up a web browser right here, and I'm going to go to cellstream.com which is our website, and that should load up here momentarily. All right, so we can see by the little lock symbol right here that this is an HTTPS exchange between my system and the server. And so this has been sent to us encrypted, and this is what protects the user's data and so forth. Okay, so the page has stopped. Let's uh, get this out of the way, and let's stop the packet capture here. All right, we'll jump back to the top and let's try to find that conversation. There's several ways to go about this. I'm gonna do it the quick and dirty way. I'm gonna say find a packet and I'm gonna make sure this is set to a string. I'm gonna make sure that we are looking in the packet bytes and I'm gonna put cell stream there and see if it can find it. So sure enough, it has found this and we can see there's several things that are going on. Obviously, it went out here. Let's see, do we see the client hello? That's what I'm looking for, the client hello right there. So this is where my web browser client connects to the server. The server says hello. You can see they do a key exchange. Now, let's just make sure that we're only looking at this conversation. And the quick way to do this is to right click on that client hello and say conversation filter and then TCP. That will create a filter syntax up here in the display filter and now we're just looking at the 189 packets it took for me to get that web page on my browser. Okay, so that's a quick and dirty way, if you will, to single out a conversation so that we can look at it. All right, so we see all of these full-size packets. These are gonna be the data packets we see TCP, so this is Ethernet, IP, TCP in the protocol model, but after that we don't see anything. And the purpose of that, or the reason for that, of course, is that the contents have been encrypted, and there's really not any purpose to even try and display this. It's all gonna be just gobbledygook. So the question is, how can we decrypt this on our local machine? The answer is we need to get the keys and we need to tell Wireshark what those keys are. So let's talk about how to do that. Now, the key for this has already happened. They already did the key exchange, so there's nothing I can do to go really backwards here. So what I'm gonna do is show you how to set up your system and then, of course, we'll do it again and we'll see how Wireshark can then use the key to decrypt, all right? So I'm gonna actually close this and I'm not gonna save it. Okay, so here are the steps that you need to follow. Now, this only works in Windows, and uh, obviously we're using Windows 10. You should be able to go backwards into Windows 7. I believe this all works similarly. Here's how you do this. You click on the Start, and you're going to look for a program called Environment Variables, or you're going to type the word Environment Variables. Now, this won't actually show up on my screen because I'm recording a different screen, but just start typing the word Environment. And one of the choices you are going to get is a choice to edit the system environment variables. And you will get this system properties window. Again, just start typing the word environment. Okay, and then what you wanna do is click on the lower right-hand side, it says environment variables. You'll wanna click on that. And these are your environment variables. Now, every machine is gonna be slightly different. It doesn't really matter in the top area here for user variables for your user you're going to click new and you're going to give this a variable name uh, let's call it ssl key log file okay so 
just give it a title so you can easily recognize this. And then what you want to do is you want to put in a file name and path of where you're going to keep your keys or where you're going to want your system to save the keys when you're using your web browser. A quick little note here, this only works with Chrome and Firefox to my knowledge. Now I know the new version of Microsoft's web browser is based in Chromium, but I'm not sure at the time of this recording whether it will also do this. So that's something somebody may want to put in the comments. All right, so we want to put a path here. So I'm going to say C colon, and then I'm going to say keys. So I'm going to create a subdirectory called keys, and then I'm just going to call it keys.log. Okay, very important, call it keys.log or something like mykeys.log or chromekeys.log or whatever makes sense to you. Okay, and then we'll say okay. And what we will see right here is that that variable has now been created and there is the path. Okay, so we want to now say okay and then okay. And now what you need to do is you need to reboot your system. So that key actually happens. So I'm going to go reboot and then we'll pick up from there. Okay, picking up where we left off. My system is rebooted and I'm going to start Wireshark. And we're basically going to do the exact same procedure. All right, Wireshark has started up here. And then the other thing we want to do is we want to run our web browser and go to the CellStream website. So first let's start Wireshark capturing on the Ethernet interface right here. We'll start a capture. Okay, it's starting to capture traffic. We'll bring our web browser over here. We'll go to cellstream.com. So this is the exact same procedure and we'll let that page complete. You can see that the lock symbol is there. I'll just move this out of the way and we will stop the packet capture. And like we did before, we'll locate that particular conversation. So I'm going to click on find a packet. It's in the packet bytes. We're looking for a string. We're looking for cell stream. Okay, we have found the client hello right here. We'll right click on this. So we want a conversation for TCP. There we go. This is the now the conversation and again we still see that it is all encrypted. Now let's go check to make sure that the key was saved in the log file. So we're going to open up our file manager. There it is and we'll go to the C drive. There's the directory for keys. We'll open that up and you can see right here there is a text document called keys and this is the log file that we need to use. So the next piece of this, we know we're capturing those keys now, which is great. In fact, you can open this. We can double click. I think it'll open up and we'll get notepad. There you go. And you can see all these keys that are being saved. Now remember, when you go to a web page, there's actually a lot of different connections that occur. So all of these things produce keys. Okay, so pretty cool. All right, so we know we have this. Now what we want to do is back in Wireshark, we want to tell Wireshark to be able to use these keys to decrypt. So the way that you do this is you go to Edit and Preferences, and then under Protocols, You'll slide this down to where it says TLS, right there, and you can input where the log file name is going to go. So you just click on Browse right here, and then we'll navigate to the C drive, to Keys, and select the Keys log file and say Open. There you go. It's put that same file in there, and then we say OK. And what should happen here, if this all works, is we should start to see HTTP packets. And indeed, here we see HTTP. Aha! So we're not just seeing the TCP, we now see the HTTP 
there's the encrypted data and guess what it is now decrypted and we can see what was going on so pretty cool right that we get to now see this because Wireshark is able to use those keys and we'll see the gets and the responses and so forth. So pretty cool that all of this is now being decrypted. Now, you know, there's a couple of limitations to this. It's obviously being done on my machine, right? If you do a capture on your machine of something that you want to now share the key with me, you have to be able to extract the key. So what that means is you have to go into that log file and using a text editor, you have to find that particular key and then you need to send the key to me so that I can put that key into Wireshark and then do the decryption. So this is really a handy way for you to do it on your local machine and to see you know, how the decryption works. So I hope that helps everybody. I use this all the time and I hope you will too when you need to decrypt that stuff. Thanks for watching.